What's up guys and welcome back to the channel, I'm Andy the Middle Age Gamer and this is the brand new Lithgow Arms F90 GBBR manufactured by KWA Review. Now, as always, usual disclosures ahead, this is an airsoft toy, this is not a real firearm, there are no real firearms in this video or in any of my videos. This was bought by me and these are my honest and genuine opinions based off my own experience with this lovely GBBR. Okay, so with those disclosures out of the way, let's jump in. Let's start by asking ourselves, who are Lithgo Arms? Well, Lithgo Arms is a company formed in 1904 to manufacture small arms for the Australian Defence Force. And they have basically seen two world wars, the War on Terror, and a lot of other Cold Wars and little bits in between for over a hundred years. In the mid-1980s, they started to manufacture the adopted Org A2 and the A3 in the late 90s for the Australian Defence Force before being asked in the mid 2000s to develop a new update for the A3 to make it more future proof, let's put it that way. So Lithgow Arms went back to the drawing board and completely designed a new version of the AUG, so much different that on legal terms, they no longer needed to apply for a license from Steyr to produce the org anymore. They can now do it themselves completely in-house, which is absolutely fantastic and has led us to the F90. So what did they do? Well, let's zoom in. Let's do what we always do and start at the rear and work our way forward. Okay, so doing as we always do, let's start at the rear. As you can see, the entire lower is slightly different. It's very similar to an AUG, but it's different. Noticeably, the high rise here that goes up, which is great for giving you a better cheat. We'll come to that. But here at the rear, you do have your thick, medium rubberized butt pad, which has now been ribbed for textures and to make sure that it grips your shoulder very well. You do still have the button here to push in so you can remove your takedown pin. And just like the Styrog, the takedown pin doubles as your rear sling point, which is quite nice. Now, you will notice that here at the bottom, the profile is slightly different. You've been ergonomically cut, etc. That was because on the real steel, when they were designing it, they were prototyping it with having a LiPo battery in here that would power up through cables to this upper rise. Yes, you do get a better cheat weld, so whether it's in or not, but it was designed so that you could power the main monolithic upper rail and the side rail on the side, meaning one battery to power all your optics would be a lot more efficient. You could carry a lot more of them LiPos than you could all the different types of batteries for different optics, especially night vision that runs down very quickly. So it was just one of those little updates that they wanted to do. So far it's not been implemented, but according to the designers, they are trying to get it in for the 2027 update to this rifle. Now, moving forward, we do have our left-hand ejection part port cover, which is right here. This is removable. You can flip it to the other side. And as you can see, what uh, KWA have done is quite decent, but they did negate one of the real steel differences is that you would have a brass deflector. The normal Styrog doesn't, but the F90 does. The Gen 1 brass deflector would be mounted here. You could unscrew it and mount it to this. For some reason, KWA didn't do that. That's a downer, but it's not a deal breaker. You can still flip this over to your side if you want to have it as a left-hand eject. As you can see, the gun is clear. It's completely locked to the rear, but if I press the now incorporated bolt release from the, F oh, from the A3, you can send the bolt home, very simple, or you can push down on it to lock the bolt to the rear. Now, let's talk magazines. One of the main differences was in the profile of the release. With the original Steyr A3, um, you would get to a point where you could just push it a millimeter and your magazine would come flying. With the F90, you have to push it, push it past there and in to release your magazine. The whole design is basically so you don't accidentally drop it. Now, these magazines are proprietary F90 magazines or org style mags, as you can see right here. They're nice and rubberized polymer top. You have a nice thick polymer butt plate in case you do drop it, which is secured on by a Allen key screw here and your fill valve is right there. Um, I wouldn't advise dropping them because they are quite heavy, but they, this one alone is a lot lighter than the standard LM4 mags. Anyone who shot a KWA LM4, 
will know that those magazines are bloody heavy. This is about a third of the weight to half the weight at, at, at worst. They still hold 30 rounds. It's very easy to feed just by pinching here at the top and using a normal speed loader in there. You can fill these mags very quickly and they are very gas efficient. You're looking around about 90 rounds per one fill of gas on a cool day, let's say. You'll probably get more in a hot summer or a little bit less during the middle of winter. You might lose a magazine's worth. But other than that, these are really good and have done very well. Now, as we continue with the obvious, obviously, uh, amazing rifle, let's talk. Here we have your metal push through button. You can just push that all the way through and slide the upper and lower apart, or you can push it all the way back to secure it. You do have nice vent cuts in the upper, which are not there on the Org A3, and these are mirrored on both sides. The whole idea of this was to help cool the barrel, because obviously your chamber's here, and your barrel goes all the way through. This is the 20 inch version and KWA does have plans depending on how successful this is in retail to manufacture a shorter barrel set and upper separately as well as as a full kit. It's entirely up to you guys to buy this rifle and therefore you would get it. Now as it is, I've not had any problems running this CQB. It's run absolutely flawlessly. Now let's move down to the grip. The grip itself has been reprofiled. It's a lot more ergonomic. And as you can see, you can see my fingers were moving away there. It balances perfectly in your hand. It's not heavy at the rear and it's not too heavy at the front. It's just really good. It's got a great um, center of gravity on this and it is just brilliant. Now, you do have your push through fire selector safety as you would call it. So you can push it all the way through there and you're in safe. Push it up there and you're on fire and to know that it's red for dead or white for safe now your trigger has been worked on they with the f90 unlike the standard org that was very mushy with this you can pull it in one two and you can hear that click so about two millimeters of travel and you can do it in semi and you've got a nice tactile and audible reset or you can pull it all the way and go full auto now, of course, if your sight doesn't allow it, you do have, like the real steel, a lockout trigger. So you can just pull this pin here. You just pull it with your nail down and it locks it in semi only, which is great. I'll just push it up and lock it up and you can have the full range of travel. Now, here at the front, the guard has been extended. Normally the styrol goes up to about here, but this has now been enlarged. One reason is you can now push this out here at the front, pull this little piece out. And if you own an SL40 grenade launcher in the short configuration, it would fit here. The long one, it goes out here and will attach up here at this port at the front, which is also acts as a bayonet port. But it's there. Why you need that in this day and age? Don't ask me. But it is there. And that, like I say, locks on. If you don't, you can easily just reinstall the piece. And it is ridged, so you can actually hold it here and use this, which I found very comfortable. And use that as your foregrip rather than put something there. And on here, you can put like your light and just use your pistol light or what have you with your thumb. It's entirely up to you, but it is there for that. Now, moving up, we do get to our charging handle. Again, this is another part that's been reworked. First of all, as you can see, it now tucks out of the way. It goes 90 degrees up in line with the rifle so that it doesn't catch on your web gear. Of course, when you're in that position, you're gonna catch. And with the original A3 being just this big long hook with the button there on the A3, but it would still be such a sharp point that it would definitely hook on. And in a firefight, you don't want that. So of course with this, you can still pull it to the rear and lock it up. And you can let the thing go with a HK slap if you wish. You do have your forward assist button, like I say, which allows you to forward assist. Okay, one thing you can see straight away is they've cut open both sides of the upper receiver here to allow heat to go out and you can now see an exposed fluted barrel all the way down the length of the barrel. That is to help mitigate heat. One of the problems that the A3 suffers with is really quick overheating. Now, of course, Steyer would say, well, you have the quick release barrel, you can just swap it out, but do you really wanna be running around with two or three barrels in your backpack? Not really. So in order for modern age combat, for long, uh, how to say longevity in battle, 
it's all been fluted and lightened, giving it a modernized look. And again, being built from a, uh, how to say, milled aluminum rather than cast, it's a lot more stronger and a lot more, how to say, durable in the long, how to say, term. Now, as you can see, you do have a metal rail here at the front and that's held on with this bolt here. And you have two bolts that hold your sling plates and support here for the front. Now, of course, there is a hole here. You can stick a bungee cord through or a charm if you're in Call of Duty. And you have your proper sling point up here, which does rotate, but that's fine. And is very big and chunky. Now, moving down the barrel, as you can see, you do have your support lug here, which is great. And you do have your standard AUG muzzle device, which is 14 millimeter counterclockwise. Now, if I flip this around, I can show you those markings the right way. As you can see here on the barrel, it does have your serial number, which does say UK at the end. And that is basically to tell you that you have a UK compliant gas blowback. Basically, it means that on point twos, you're not gonna hit more than 350 FPS because you have a fun switch, keeping it within the UK legal limits and allowing us to use this CQB as well. You do have here at the front a mock gas block, which is quite nice, fully replicated as the real steel. You have your nice larger rail section above the styre, and all the other bits are, how would you say, mirrored. You do have the Lithgow Arms logo embossed into the polymer stock. All in all, an absolute beautiful piece of kit. Sadly, they do have that in, it's not a sticker, it is on there. You will have to remove that over time. Um, but yes, it's absolutely beautiful. Now let's see how she performs on the range, shall we? Okay, so let's see what the Lithgow Arms F90 can do FPS wise. So I'm using 0.25 gram BBs and green gas. First shot hot, coming down, here we are. There we go. Okay, so 10 shots over the chrono. Let's see. So we got an average of 315, which is just bang on. Um, your first few start shots are gonna need to be, I would say, fired quickly and then just refill it. Just because then on a full mag, it's very, very pokey. But that's not bad, especially with the cold here. We're currently sitting around about six degrees Celsius outside and a nice wind, but that is very good. Okay, so let's push it back to 15 meters, um, maybe 20. Let's see what this can do for grouping size. Absolutely stunning. Okay, apologies for the bell in the background, but we have the Texas Star now, so let's take it back and let's see what she can do. Bloody awesome. Okay, so as you can see with the shooting test, it's absolutely accurate. I've got no qualms with that. This shot here was a uh, was not a flyer. That was just me trying to find out where my point of impact was. And this one up here was, I would say, as I hit here with the first shot, I accidentally hit the uh, full auto mode and it got two rounds off and that one went up there. That's a me issue, not a gun issue. But even if we take it in, a three inch grouping is perfectly fine. And if we go all the way to the full, a four and a half inch, if you go from that to that, which I wouldn't do anyway, but it's still absolutely a acceptable for what they've done to get this to UK law. Very good. 
Now, let's see exactly what they did, shall we? So, I have my magnet with me. Let's have a look. Let's start with the butt pad, shall we? Very nice, medium rubberized pad that does grip. Of course, all here is a nice thick rubber, but inside there is steel, I would say, locking latches. So this is not gonna come off any time soon. Now, the securing pin for that, your cross pin, and that is steel. Again, absolutely outstanding. Great use of steel parts, as they should be. When using steel parts correctly, it can be absolutely amazing. Now, let's talk about the lower receiver, shall we? So, as you can see, you have your two-stage trigger here, which is no longer under spring pressure as the fire control group has been removed. That is secured in place here with this scrub screw. I wouldn't mess around with it. One thing I will tell you is that, I don't know if we can get this. Let's see if we can get my light. Okay, as you can see nicely in there, if I put the light on, you do have your two arms which are steel. This, here we go. Well, there we go. So, as you can see here, you have two arms that push on the fire from your trigger. They are steel arms. And if we flip it around and you take a look in here, you will see down at the bottom two steel recoil rods just there shining off the light. Those are your steel inserts into this lower receiver that allow you to, how can I say this, have some durability and reliability in working. The steel arms going across and steel guide rods are just brilliant. That's how it should be. Now, as I said, here at the bottom you have this compartment here. This compartment on the F90 um, was basically meant for a special LiPo battery to go in. The cables would be routed up to the top here and along the top to this point here, which would be made of metal and have a positive and negative so that you could charge the rail and use that as a powered rail. A really cool idea, and like I say, it is still in the works and should be coming soon. The actual bolt release is made of zinc. It's a nice heavy zinc, but the latch arm that goes up is steel. So now let's move on to the fire control group. Just like the real steel, this is a polymer housing that it sits in, but don't let that fool you as, yes, the actual levers that trip there, or the sears, whatever you call it, from the trigger is steel. Your little sear here that lifts up for your bolt stop, that's steel, your bolt stop steel, your hammers are steel, the sears are all steel, the roller is steel, the sear at the back, basically everything inside the fire control group that's important to be steel, pretty much all of it is steel, which is really, really cool, especially for longevity. Obviously your tail here at the back, which is your button, is polymer. I do apologize for the roadworks going on in the background, they're very disrespectful, right? So, absolute outstanding. I know that the Steyr use a green polymer, but the Lithgow Arms use the black one. It helps you disassociate which one is which. Now, let's move on to the bolt carrier group. As you can see here, that's just dirty. You have your captive recoil springs here. Your front end one has a dual spring because that is obviously where you would have your charging handle hit and then pull and cycle the gun. You also have your locking detents here for where the forward assist would lock onto to help use this as a forward assist. Now your recoil springs are down in here. I don't know if I can show that with the light, but we can try. But as you can see, are there, it imparts on these, on that part there. And therefore, both sides would balance equally with, with the recoil rod. Now, your nozzle is polymer, but the actual nozzle tip here is metal, is zinc, along with the loading arm right there. That is zinc, molded into a polymer frame. It's very decent, very snappy, and works. You do have an aluminum roller here at the top, which just make it more smooth cycling across the top of the lower receiver there. Just a lot better and more efficient. Now, moving on to the barrel and upper receiver. This is one big hefty lump of metal. Nice milled metal. You have your release for your hop, which is right here. This nice big Allen bolt here will be removed. And you can adjust your hop with a nice rotary detented clip 
right there. It's very faint, but it's there and it does hold. This is their brand new Type 3, which anyone who's bought any of their new stuff like the PMX will be very familiar with a Type 3 rotary hop. It makes everything work well. I don't know if I can get that. No, I can't. But inside you have the same booking as the PMX with the two little prongs, one either side of the BB for stability. Obviously, they're going to wear down. But yes, this is basically KWA spec. Now, the inner barrel only goes to about here. It's about 9 to 10 inches. So you get to the front here, but all the way down there is empty barrel space. That's basically so that it could reduce the FPS. Okay, that is one of the main differences, okay, between this one and the Asia, hence the UK barrel on there. It's just to let you know that your inner barrel is a lot shorter than the Asian version. Is that a problem? Not really. One of the other cool things when it comes to this awesome weapon is the retention of your booking. So if I was to put that in, as you can see, the booking seals until you travel approximately two inches of travel which is about 40% of its travel and then you can pull it out. The gas seal on this is just phenomenal. It is next level awesome. You've got great gas seal, great efficiency, very smooth cycling and a very nice kick. It's not too strong but it's not weak either. Now reassembly of this thing is absolutely easy. It's just pop in the rear fire control group, push it all the way in, Grab your takedown pin, it's, it's, it's simple. Just push in the tail there with your thumb and hold it like that and push it all the way through to the other side. Make sure that it is protruding there. Then just hook in at the bottom and flip on there your butt pad and then just literally push from the other side and it locks. As you heard, it is now locked in. That's not gonna come out, it's not gonna release, you're not gonna have everything fly everywhere. Make sure that your, how would say, upper and lower receiver takedown button is pushed all the way through we spin the barrel around we can then just slide in the upper and lower lock it in push the takedown through and we have it we do a quick function test and we know it works okay so if you've gotten this far in the video and you like what you see then hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And while you're there, hit the notification bell. That way you get notified whenever I upload a video and it's completely free of charge and really helps this channel grow and helps YouTube know that you like my content and recommend it to other people, free of charge. Now, obviously, if you do want to go one step further, there is the YouTube thanks button. You can actually use that and that will allow you to donate directly to the channel to put more bigger and better weapons a lot quicker on this channel. That's entirely up to you and a huge thank you ahead of time just in case you do. And even if you don't, Thank you for the consideration anyway. Now, let's jump into my final thoughts. As you guys know, I am definitely partial to a bullpup now and again, having owned and still do the TAR-21 GBBR, um, Tavor, as you would call it, which has been discontinued for the last few years. And like I say, I've been waiting for a decent bullpup to come out on the market. At this moment in time, there really is only the F90, and the WE L85A2 Gen 2. Now, that basically puts it in a non-competition. I would get this over the WE any day, um, just because I would love the L85, but I would love it to be made by someone who knows what exactly what they're doing at high quality, rather than have more problems than the real steel one did. Now, of course, people are going to ask me about the GHK Org. Well, the A2 has officially been discontinued, there is no more being manufactured, and the A3 variant has basically been put on life support to the point where it might as well be discontinued. Here in the UK, it retails for £900 and about £100 a magazine. If I was to import it, it would still cost me that, if not a little bit more, with UK customs. It's not affordable for the average airsofter out there, or certainly even the enthusiast. It's definitely a question, especially for an A19 90s or 80s style of bullpup which is lacking in some of the features and with parts accessibility being very rare outside of Hong Kong you can imagine why once again I do apologize for the noise in the background they have decided to do road roadworks in my area I can't control that trust me I wish I could um, but moving back to the F90 what KWA have done have basically brought the F90, as close as we can get to the real steel, with all the one-to-one -one 
furniture, etc., minus the brass deflector. It's brilliant. If you get an SL40 grenade launcher, you can use that underneath, etc., and all the other devices that were the Australian Armed Forces use. It's completely one-to-one -one with that furniture. It's brilliant. Gas efficiency-wise, phenomenal. Great improvement from KWA. What are you doing? It feels like KWA have had a sat down by manufacturers, oh, license holders, should I say, and they said, hey, do a better job, you know? And it feels like it. It's the same talking to that Umrax did with VFC 11 years ago. And look what they've done. They turned their, I would say, quality around very quickly. And we now have some of the best GBBRs on the market a VFC now. And so KWA look to be absolutely following that trend. I mean, their new Type 3 is great. You know, fantastic hop. It really does work. The FPS is now within limits, unlike the Tavor. And everything is just brilliant. Now, let's get on to the negatives. One, proprietary magazines. I'm not always a fan of that, to be honest with you. I do like the ability to have access to more than just the manufacturer's magazine or that model. Why? It helps me if I own an LM4 and I get one of these, I can cross the mags. That would have been great, but you can't on this. You have to buy the proprietary ones. Yes, they are very good mags, well built, lighter than the LM4, but that still is an issue there. The other issue is this is 2024. We do live in a better time now where standardization is kind of settling in. And I just wish that KWA would follow suit with their inner barrel and booking. These are still KWA proprietary parts. And that kind of sucks. The good news is you're not going to need to change it. The accuracy is there, pretty decent. Of course, you could get a longer barrel for it, the Asian spec barrel, and you'd be hitting way past 40 meters up to the 70 meter mark, and you would have the FPS for a proper DMR. But as I live in the UK, they shortened it, given us the 350 on 0.2s, call it 308, 300 mark, on two fives and a little bit less on two eights, which for CQB, that's your, your limit is two eight here in the UK, but it hops it no problem. And it keeps that hot about 5,000 rounds in. And as you can see, I haven't even cleaned it since I bought it. It's been running pretty much dry as it is. It's just been absolutely a true workhorse. It's been absolutely brilliant. So yeah, I would say a high recommendation on that. And with the only negatives being the barrel booking and mag, they're pretty much a non-issue. By the time you need one, I'm very sure other suppliers out there like Lilacs, Maple Leaf, etc., will have made one, even Unicorn. Same with the bookings. As for the magazines, that's the only thing I can see that will be, a, I would say, a suck issue. But to be honest with you, at least you know they work. You know what you're going to get. It's not a case of... Does this Master Mods one work properly? Do I get more power? Does a double eagle? You know, that sort of thing that we have with the M4 where you have different power levels, different quality, performance. You don't have to worry about that. You know what you're getting, it's gonna work. And as I say, with the balance of this weapon being perfectly centralized, you're not getting any heavy weight on your chest. You're not having front end heavy, etc. It's just really, really good. So, Obviously, we reached the end now of this review, and I would absolutely love to hear what you guys think of the F90. For me, good on you, KWA. Keep this up. Prior to the PMX and this, I would never have gone for a KWA past my Umarex Jose Tavor. KWA made that one, and to be honest, I can't wait for the comparison video. But... Um, yeah, there are issues. And since the Mega Rams that we've seen on the channel, go right ahead and look through my catalog. You'll find it. And you'll see that they're not as good as other brands out there. So, of course, KWA was like an afterthought. But when I heard that this was being made and being the only bullpup available, you know, next to the WE, as you would say, in gas blowback. Yes, in AEG there is lots. But we're talking gas blowback that's actually still being manufactured, you know, this is a really great option. It's fully tactical, it's modernized, it's lightweight in that respect, and you get a really good recoil impulse. Not too much, not too little. So yeah. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. And I've been the Middle-Aged Gamer, and you guys have been absolutely awesome, and I will see you in the next one.